Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris and you're watching The Sense. So on today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Burberry Bespoke or Burberry Signatures range. Uh, they are named differently in different parts of the world. I know that in the UK, where they are from, they are called the Bespoke Line. Here in the States, they have named it the Signatures Line. This is essentially their private line, their private blend by Tom Ford, their La Collection Privé by Dior. Like those brands have their private range of fragrances. This is Burberry's private range. It's for the most part, a more understated brand that doesn't really get a lot of love when it comes to fragrance overall, although they do have some pretty good fragrances now that are popular. That has not always been the case for the House of Burberry, and a lot of people, for that reason, do not know about their private range of fragrances. So I have here five different fragrances that I do have part of this range. The total amount that they actually do have in this original range is seven, so I'm missing two of them in here, which is going to be Tudor Rose as well as Windsor Tonic. So if you're looking for those, I'm sorry I don't have them. And just so you know, they don't send you samples of other ones that you can try, unfortunately. There's not a lot of department stores here in the United States that actually carry this range. And a lot of Burberry boutiques also don't carry it. So it's a little difficult to find. It's a little harder to find. So make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you're watching and let's get right into it. So in the number five spot, I do have Hawthorne Bloom. And this is what the bottle looks like if you guys are not very familiar with it. They are a nice glass bottle. They have the actual name here and a percentage. That percentage is the amount of oil concentration that the fragrance does have in it. Bloom, we have 12%. They used to make them in higher concentrations. They reformulated this range. Then they made it a little bit less potent and um, I'm not sure because I haven't gotten to try the older formulations. It's, like I said, a very hard range to find overall. But this range itself, the newer ones at least, they're not terribly bad when it comes to longevity performance and, you know, just that durability that you're looking for in a fragrance. They're not the best, though. I will say that. They are manufactured by Coty. All of these are made in Spain. The price point for these is 271 US dollars for 100 ml bottles. That is the only size that we get in these. And I will say that for the most part, like I said, they get anywhere from four to five hours of wear time. If you're looking for something that's gonna give you more longevity and more performance, there are some in here that are going to exceed that time frame. But for the most part, like I said, it's anywhere from four to five hours of wear time. But the first one we have here is Hawthorne Bloom. This is a fragrance created by Francis Kirkshon. Francis Kirkshon has his own brand that has been bought out by LVMH, and now he is the in-house perfumer for the House of Dior. But prior to that, he worked quite regularly with the House of Burberry. He's created Her, uh, so obviously Her is very similar to Baccarat Rouge, which is his very famous fragrance itself. But he created this guy here, Hawthorne Bloom, in 2017, and... This is a green fragrance with notes of iris, jasmine, musk, patchouli, and violet. You do get a very green element in here. Uh, it is a powdery fragrance, so we do get quite a bit of that iris. It's not a lipsticky type of powdery fragrance. It's just powdery. You do get more of a green, earthy type of patchouli in this fragrance. The violet is very prevalent in here, although it's not the star of the show. I feel like the star of the show in this fragrance is more of the patchouli. It does have quite a bit of musk in here as well. The jasmine comes out to play just a little bit. It's not nowhere near as vibrant as, let's say, something like J'adore would be because J'adore is a very big jasmine and elongulon fragrance. But it does have some in here, um, very minute, very understated. Like I said, the musk, the patchouli are the star of the show. I also want to say that there is also some green elements in here such as vetiver because it does have a very strong vetiver type of note quality in here so it does come out very prevalent although it's not listed i do smell it in here so it is going to be a very green type of fragrance and i did review a fragrance on this channel that is by the house of dolce and gabbana it's part of their velvet collection and it was Velvet Pure. So this is very similar to that. So if you like Velvet Pure, it's going to be a more understated version of that because it is a green scent, but it's an old school green scent. It's not like number 19 where, although it's old, obviously, number 19 or number 19 Poudre tend to come off a little bit modern because they were ahead of their time. 
this is kind of like late 80s late 90s type of green scents and although it's done well it's done more modernly it's done more tastefully for the new world it does tend to have a little bit of that older flair to it if you will so that's the reason i have selected this to be my number five spot in my number four spot i have selected four garden roses this is what this bottle looks like all of them have their own set little bow on here it's hard to say if this is actual leather it feels like actual leather because it has like the suede type of material on the back and then it has the leathery on the front which is very much known to be a leather trait itself but this is what the bottle looks like just so you do know they have this beautiful house check on the neck itself this one does say 20 percent on it and the reason i'm assuming it has a 20 percent and why it's a stronger concentration is because one of the notes in here is italian lemon italian lemon or any citric type of note is not going to be very long lasting so they have to use quite a bit for it and and even though they use quite a bit there's not that longevity or durability that you're looking for out of any citric note this fragrance was created in 2017 this is another fragrance made by francis kirkshan it's not bad i will say that so it is called garden roses it smells exactly as the name does state so it smells like if you were to go out in a garden and they are freshly cut roses you smell the rose petals it's very nice, but it also has a lemon type of zesty quality to it. It also has vetiver in it, so it has that green element as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. The fragrance itself is done very well. It is selling you on what it's saying. The problem with this fragrance for me comes to be that it is a little bit generic. It's a little bit, eh. 271 for this doesn't really, you know, shock me or, you know, wow me by any means. It's done well, it's done incredibly accurate to the description of the fragrance, but it's nothing super mind-blowing or it's extremely artistic or on constraint of conventions to have that price point, if that may, makes any sense. So definitely I would say that this fragrance does not have the longevity or performance that I would like it to. I know that other people have mentioned that Tudor Rose is better than this. I'm assuming it is because it has deeper elements to it. So but if it's going to be a fresh scent it needs to give you some type of template to work off of and this one is not and i will say that it is likable it is nice to wear so if you are looking for this fragrance although it's marketed for men and women i would say it's more in the feminine quality or the category and it is done well it's kind of like if you were to go and grab burberry her blush it's it's in that kind of family it kind of has a blushy tone to it a blushy type of smell to it so if you enjoy light fresh and clean floral scents i would certainly say to check this one out it is nice but it's not extremely different to something else out on the market i'm not saying that there's something out there that smells just like this but i am saying that it's not anything super unique for the price point. in our number three spot we do have high tea by the house of burberry and this is what the bottle looks like it's a little bit different so it has that nice tan neutral type of bow that's very much reminiscent of Burberry. The fragrance is created in 2021, so it's a newer fragrance for their range. The perfumer for this is Maya Lermont. I am probably butchering that name. Very sorry if I am. But this fragrance is very nice. I do like it. When I first did get this fragrance, I sprayed it on and I was like, hmm not impressed this fragrance is a little lackluster when you first spray it and as you start to wear it it kind of gives you some of that je ne sais quoi that very beautiful difference to any other fragrance so although it kind of smells a little bit like my burberry the original fragrance by burberry it does have its own unique flair to it where it does come off as being a little bit more unique a little bit more different the notes on this fragrance are and i'm sorry because i'm going to be reading them it has quite a bit of notes but the top notes on here are bergamot clary sage and roman chamomile on our heart notes we are going to get mate we're going to get lavender from provence as well as tunisian neroli on our base we're going to get ambroxan frankincense and tonka beans so the reason we're getting that metallic -y type of smell on this fragrance because it does have a metallic type of smell Ambroxan is in here. So Ambroxan is a synthetic note itself. It is made in a lab. There is nothing in the world that they get this scent from. It was just created in a lab for perfumery. Ambroxan is in another very famous top selling fragrance, Sauvage. And if you have ever noticed, you kind of get that metallic -y type of scent in Sauvage and you kind of get this in here. Ambroxan is not the top note in here. It's not, you know, the 
the groundbreaking, you know, star of the show here by any means, but it does have it in there, which does give it that metallic -y type of scent overall. I think because of that, this one does tend to wear a little bit longer than what other fragrances in this range would, because that synthetic component will last a long time. And Broxton, as a note overall, does tend to, you know, wear for a very, very long time. In the number two spot, we have Midnight Journey by Burberry. So this is a little bit different to the rest of the bottles. It is a darker bottle. It is a darker glass. It does have a black bow on here. It's supposed to be their darkest fragrance, I'm assuming. I, that's not what they say, but that's what I'm assuming based on their actual bottle here. Very nice fragrance. I would say that this is ranked up high because it is a fragrance that is more masculine. It is more likable, but it's also wearable. It has, you know, very deep qualities to it, but it also has qualities that make it a little bit lighthearted. This fragrance was launched in 2021 by Arlene Guyark. Guyark? I cannot pronounce the perfumer's name, I'm sorry. But the top notes for this are going to be black pepper, ginger, thyme absolute. Then in the heart notes, you're going to get kayak wood as well as lavender and may rose. The base is going to have black, amber, as well as myrrh and amber. So myrrh is probably the star of the show here. You do get some guyac wood in here as well. You do get quite a bit of black pepper in this fragrance, but it's done very well. It's not a kitchen spice. It's done in a very elaborate type of way here. You do get some ginger, which gives it that zesty type of root type quality. The May Rose is in here as well because it does balance out fragrant, the fragrance overall, and I would say that you also get some lavender in here. That's what makes this a little bit more of an old school gentleman-like fragrance. So it smells kind of like what an old school men's fragrance would smell like, but in a very modern way. I really do think that they did a great job with this fragrance. Now with that being said, it's not the most unique. So there is another fragrance in my collection by the name of Golden Myrrh by Hermedicillo Zegnia that does smell similar to this. Now they're not one-to-one, -one. they're not copies of each other. They do have that myrrh note in there, they do have those spices in there that are very much similar to each other. Now where this one differs is that it kind of has that powdery quality and that's because it does have the lavender in here. It also has a may rose that really balances out and gives that fragrance the contrast. Now with that being said, like I said, it's not the most unique fragrance, but it is a good one. So if you're looking for one of the best ones in here, I would certainly say to check this one out because it is one that I do like. It is one that I do reach for. It is one that my partner also reaches for. But like I said, for 271, you know, I'm sure you can find a nice dupe out there to get this one. And in our number one spot, we do have Amber Heath by the House of Burberry. This is what this one looks like. It is also a very nice ambery type of glass color with a red bow here. This fragrance was launched in 2017 and it is a fragrance made by Francis Kirkshun and it smells like if you were to grab Baccarat Rouge, you know, which is, it's a nice fragrance, it's a saffron fragrance, but it's kind of bubblegum and <laughs> it's kind of basic at this point. You know, it was a very nice fragrance when it launched, but everyone and their mom does wear it now. There are a ton of dupes for it, but this fragrance is like if you were to grab that fragrance and add deeper elements to it. So adding amber grease into it, adding some deep woods in here as well, which just makes it have that extra, you know, oomph. The listed notes on here are going to be patchouli, amber grease, as well as vanilla. I know that there's probably some saffron in here because it does have a very strong saffrony type of quality to it. It also has a very nice woodsy like cedar wood element at the bottom. They're not listed. The ones that are listed are the ones that I said and they do think that this fragrance does have a deeper quality to it. It is very much worth the price. It is very you know refined, elegant. It's old school money at its finest and if you do like Baccarat Rouge I would certainly say to try to smell this one if you can find it. Like I said it's harder to find. But if you are able to smell it, if you are able to try it prior to purchase, I would say that this is one to try because it's just done so well. I mean, he did a terrific job with this fragrance. Longevity for this is going to be a little bit above average. So you're going to get anywhere from a five to seven hours with this one here. It becomes a skin scent, so it does become a little bit more intimate overall. So if you like fragrances like that, then certainly try this one here, Amber Heath by the House of Burberry. Thanks so much for watching today's video, you guys. What do you guys think of this range? Have any of you tried it? 
let me know down below if you have. Also, make sure to subscribe for more fragrance-related content, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.